Hello and welcome to Coding with Danny. Today we're going to learn about virtual site. This is a new feature that has been released by JDK21, I think back in November 2023. And we are going to see from scratch how we reach to virtual thread where they are today. I think it was released in JDK 19 and has been available as a preview in 19 and 20. And now it has a fully released feature in JDK 21. So we are going to see the journey and then we're going to learn what are the challenges with the current threading architecture and how virtual thread is improving the life of developers. So if you look at the current architecture and we're going to compare with my machine. So my machine is a MacBook Air and it has a 16 GB of RAM and it has eight core machines. So when, in, when I say eight core machine, it means that one core represent one thread and each of these thread is actually managed by operating system threads. So oper operating system will give you many more threads and that depends on your memory and few other things. And each of those threads are actually ex ex executing the process on one of these threads and when it comes to the JVM it provides another layer on top of it which is has been which is or has been called as platform threads so one platform thread is equal to operating system threads and how many operating threads are there we are going to learn that uh, pretty soon how we do the calculation in the video later so if you look at the thread and memory benchmarks and you want to see how many threads will get created so in in my case one thread takes 4 mb of memory and i'll show you that calculation later how i reach that number and uh, so in that case if i have a 16 gb of ram i am using 16384 mb upon total memory per thread so which gives me a number of 4096 so if i have say a web application where I am expecting a peak traffic of 2000 concurrent requests which means 2000 users are hitting my web application at the peak traffic and the thread preparation is going to take say 500 microsecond. So what that becomes a uh, millisecond. So total time for one request is 0 0.1 millisecond. So for 2000 requests it comes out to be 200 millisecond. This section now my thread is blocked for 200 millisecond. So the actual work done by the thread is are done only for 200 millisecond and what that means is my total cpu utilization per second so at any given point of time my cpu is being utilized at only 20 percent right and if 20 percent cpu utilization happens at 2000 thread and i want to reach 90 percent cpu utilization because i paid a lot of money for my machine i want to util utilize it completely across the core so for getting there i would need 9000 threads so 2000 into 90 by 20 that give me 9000 thread so for creating 9000 thread and maintaining in the uh, my memory how much me memory do i need so 9000 multiplied by 4 mb that gives me 36000 mb if i convert into gb by dividing by 1024 i get 35 gb of ram is required i don't have that much ram and my machine is going to crash so i will never be able to use that so based on that as you have seen there are limitation that platform threads are limited by memory operating system and number of cores it also depends on what which version how powerful your co cores are which is one of the reason you know move from macbook m1 to m2 to m3 so essentially all of this is limited by the total number of threads available on, on a machine and creating a platform thread is a really expensive operation as you can see if if i'm going to take 4 mb of uh, first i'm going to spending time on the memory for maintaining those ram second each of those thread creation and thread cleanup also takes up some time right so creating this platform thread is expensive we are going to see about how thread can be pooled and stuff that doesn't really solve the problem we're going to see that in in a further video so let's first take a look at a simple thread application where we're going to see what is the maximum number of thread that my machine can support a uh, disclaimer here you will not see exactly 4096 threads because some of the threads will be used by other background processes say my id or the application which i'm running I'm, I'm running keynote i'm running notion and some browsers so they all take some threads so my number is slightly lower than 4096 but it is pretty close so you'll be able to see what is the max number of threads that i can use so let's take a look at that example first and then we'll see uh, how to create virtual threads later let's let's understand how to create our basic threads and how do threads work how threads are forked from the main branches and is the maximum number of thread that my machine can create and we'll also learn about how to calculate how many threads your machine can create and how it impacts the performance let's go ahead and create a simple program now i will go ahead and create package first so i'm going to create a new package we're going to call this package as previous this is to save the file where we have been creating threads 
prior to Java 21. So I'm going to create that. Inside this, I'm going to create a new Java class called my concurrent thread. And there are two ways to create the threads. One is by implementing the runnable interface and the other is by extending the thread. So I'm going to extend the thread. I'm going to extend a thread class. And now thread class, you have to override the run method. So I'm going to write the override. And inside this, I'm going to create the public void run method. So I've created my public void run. And now what we're going to do is we want to simply do a thread dot sleep. And I want it to sleep for say milliseconds. That should be good enough. Now it's complaining about this. So let me see if I can fix this code quickly. Surround with try catch. I want to do it five times. So I'm going to put it in a simple for loop. Let's do it with in stream. So I'm going to use range and it takes inclusive value zero through exclusive value five. So it'll run from zero, one, two, three, four. And now what you want to do is we want to do for each and I want to say for each value which is coming in from the integer stream range, I want to run on it five times. And what do you want to do in there? I want to just move this code which is for thread sleep over here and I'll print out some number here. So I want to print out what is the number that is coming in from the integer stream. So now I have this thread, it's not going to run on its own obviously so i have to create a thread a class which is going to consume this thread so let's go ahead and create a consumer thread class i'm going to call this as consumer thread and what basically is going to happen in this class is i am going to be creating my public static void main and inside this i'm going to say my concurrent thread thread one equal to new my concurrent thread now let's just check what is happening here so i'm going to do run okay now when i run my class i'm going to run this class just this will make sure that my my concurrent thread class is working that it is sleeping five seconds and then printing out zero one two three four but what you need to understand is that this is not going to start my thread okay what i mean by that is if i create one more concurrent thread over here and i say thread two and i do this thread to dot run if i do this these two are going to be executing one after the other in a sequential pattern if you don't trust me you can do this so how do we start this threads concurrently so for doing that if you see here it has started 0 1 2 3 4 so this is the thread 1 run and this is the thread 2 run if i want to start this concurrently i would have to execute the start method so if i do this start Okay, now if I'm going to run this, you will see that both thread one and thread two are getting executed concurrently. Let's add one more piece in there. I want to figure out which thread is running. Basically, what is the name of the thread in there or what is the number of the thread, right? So before I do that, I don't want to keep creating thread one, thread two, three, thread three, four and five because we want to eventually see what is the maximum number of thread we can reach. So let's put this in a loop. So I can get rid of this for now. And what I'll do is I will, let's use in stream again, in stream range. Um, let's create a maximum integer over here. Okay. I'm going to create integer max is equal to, let's create 10. And I'm going to provide this range equal to 10. Again, for each. So what I want to do is I want to first create a list of threads so let's create a list of threads it's called thread list and i'm going to say new array list of threads and inside these what i want to do is create those many threads that have defined the max so i want to create a maximum of 10 threads so i'm going to add into this list what do i need to add i need to add my concurrent thread so now all of this is created i have my threads now i want to execute that so I'll just put this as create threads and now I want to start the threads. So for starting the thread, what we're going to do again, we are simply going to go over the list and call every thread. So I'm going to do thread list. I'm just going to iterating over the number of threads. So don't use stream, use stream. It's up to you. 
you just have to edit it or you can just do a simple for loop as well if you want so over here what i want to do for each thread t each thread t so let's do thread start so now what will happen is it will it'll start these and we also want to number our uh, let's let's keep it small actually let's keep it five right now so what i want to also do is i want to know which thread is exactly running a task so what is a task the task which i've defined is to print it out and go to sleep okay what we'll do is we are going to be creating accepting the uh, thread id so let's create private thread id and this is of type integer okay now we have to create a constructor so we are going to create public my concurrent and this will accept a thread id thread id and we are going to assign this thread id this dot thread id equal to thread id so i'm going to say started from thread id started for thread id i want to say thread id so now i need to go on this related problem and over here i want to pass thread number that is my thread id i now what you'll see is the threads are created concurrently but they will not run in in a particular sequence meaning that i should have seen zero first then one then two three four and five this is because java doesn't guarantee you that which thread is going to get picked up but the point is that five threads are being created and are doing the task which have assigned them to do so if you see here so now the question is why was virtual thread created so if you look at your machine today with with the invention of all the cloud in picture now aws gcp azure and what not whenever you have to expand you have to either expand vertically or you have to expand horizontally when when the companies were doing in house development where they had this server on the premise they used to go for vertical because that was the e easiest to do versus buying a whole new machine and uh, expanding horizontally and why would they do that because the maximum number of thread that i can create on my machine is 4096 yours could be different and i'll talk how to find out the maximum threads so i am going to see what is the maximum number of threads so right now i'm creating 10 threads let's say i i go ahead and create 1000 right now everything is done it is able to create if it is not able to create it would throw an error so i know that if i give 10000 it will create 10000 platform threads oh i see it's still it's still doing it five times actually i made the mistake my bad so i'm going to give max over here and i don't have to give 25 i'll just stick to 500 this should this should work now so if if you see uh, it errored out somewhere around 4065 threads so based on the observation if you look at today's web application where i might be using tomcat or say netty server in case of tomcat it starts with the default 200 threads you are not going to request for four give me all 4096 threads because that's that's not the only thing that is that will be running on application you will need some thread for your background process and stuff right so you will start with a smaller number say 200 and say you add flexibility of use a maximum of say thread and so on and so forth you can do all of that setting in there so whenever a tomcat start it will request for 2000 threads so it goes into the thread pool so the time taken to start the thread every time a request come in you have saved that but now you're holding up in, in the memory right so in that case if i'm getting 200 requests that 200 requests will be equal to making 200 calls by concurrent users so 200 users are going to be calling my application which may be further calling apis or database and my call call will get blocked so uh, to give you a simple example imagine i have an application where all i'm doing is making a call to my blog index.html and trying to download the blog and dump it into a local file so at each of these places you'll see that these two places i have the thread which is going to block so if i have uh, 300 congrat requests coming in what will happen is 200 requests will be utilized uh, and my thread is currently the 100 requests that will come in they are going to wait for the threads to become free so while they are waiting my my cpu is idle it's not doing any work the threads uh, think of this as this whole section as thread dot sleep right I, I put a say a call to my backend system or my database uh, is 200 millisecond 
so in millisecond the block threads are not doing any work so my cpu is not getting utilized and i will start seeing performance issue so to solve this sort of problem we said okay we're going to scale you can do horizontal scaling or you can do vertical scaling in vertical scaling you may say hey let, let's go ahead and add more ram more cpu core more hard disk space and all that and increase it but all of this costs money whether you do it on the cloud or or on premises on premise i think it's going to cost much more than uh moving to the cloud but even on the horizontal scaling way say you you can uh, scale it by adding more instances of the machine say i'm going to add 2 gb machines i'm going to add uh, 30 machines 13 cents out there if it's in in the cloud it's going to cost you a lot because not every time you are going to be at peak request it may go fluctuate up and down yes cloud does give you the option of killing the instances if they are not being used by specifying minimum and maximum number of instances but it costs money same way if you're going to say okay i'm going to increase that i'm going to add more data center adding data center also uh, you know costs and you can uh, distribute the load by geography and uh, ip address you, you can do all of that but again this costs money you will basically adding more ap applications out there more instance spending burning out more money in there which is why you have companies where they have dedicated department to help you reduce the cost so if you look at us as a application today whenever a tomcat gets one request uh, hit on say google.com for example that call is equal to that request is equal to one thread so say in my case when i'm making a call to my website while the data is being fetched my thread is blocked while the data is being copied my thread is blocked and eventually the thread is released so this whole operation is happening on a single thread right so to solve this problem people said let's go ahead and i uh, don't you know uh, asynchronous blocking because one my performance is slow but with asynchronous uh, i i may improve the performance a little so essentially you will achieve this by uh by using executor service completable feature all the goods which were introduced in java 8 and 11 right so at that point of time you would start on on uh, t1 and uh, so using executor service you're going to add into the pipeline and thread 2 is making a call to the website to download the data and then this thread t3 is actually dumping everything so i'll see a slight performance improvement but you'll also see a spike so right now you would see a spike of from one thread to three threads at, at this point of time so in this case if you're if you want to improve uh, performance yes spanning out or fanning out uh, horizontally it's going to help you a lot over here right but uh, horizontal scaling will become costly eventually right so and also what you'll see is you are not really gaining much over here because all you're doing is you are making two blocking calls and breaking it to a smaller unit if you're doing a join over it if, if this is a thread join this thread is is still blocked over here if you, if you don't join that say you you just want to dump something then yes this red section will will not be there but most of the cases you have to have a join where you have you are waiting for these two operations to complete before you tell a customer your file has been copied. So then people said, okay, let's come up with reactive design. So in reactive design, you uh, all framework which you see out there, they're all built up on project reactor or spring web flux. So in that case, what is happening is your, your request would start on one thread and as soon as it gives direction to hey uh, spawn two more threads t2 and t3 to do my job this particular threads is returned back to the pool and whenever you, these two threads complete their job they are going to start the next thread to prepare the response that needs to be shown to the customer so if i'm showing back to the customer hey your job is completed this particular will start on a different thread so imagine this if you go to a restaurant and a waiter comes in and asks and hands you the menu and says please have a look and decide what you want to eat 15 minutes later another waiter comes in who takes your order 15 minutes later another server comes in or a waiter comes in and serves the food and once you're done with that a fourth waiter comes in to collect your check for you it does not matter who your waiter was because your job was to come in sit down order eat pay and leave as long as your job is being done you don't care who is take who is actually uh, accomplishing that job for you so same thing is happening over here where we are using two different threads and now my although my number has reduced from uh three threads to two threads but now the the problem is this thing can become error prone over time and you still have a blocking call you you need to understand again that are uh, all the all the calls which you're making right to break it up and make it a partial reactive design these two calls should also also be non-blocking call otherwise what's what's the point of uh you know customer wait 
for a for a pipeline to finish so to imp further improve that uh, there is a fully reactive design in the in this case uh, what developers use they use a non blocking io library which is a feature i don't remember which version it was i believe in java 11 or uh, do come and let me know it's not on top of my head but these nio libraries are uh, with projects like spring web plux or quarkus so if, if you're using quarkus you would see panache version of mongo and mongodb where which is a non-blocking io if, if you are going to be using the uh, and uh, other good stuff that comes with the reactive reactive libraries right so you have to use that particular version of the library for making application fully reactive so in that case as soon as call is blocked it is uh, thread is released but the problem with this up approach is the coding becomes really really complex right and secondly exception handling is take goes to another level and now imagine for this sort of scenario where you where you are using different different threads coming the the waiter example which i gave right where one thread is finishing up if it is blocked it goes back to the pool as soon as the job is unblocked they call a new thread so now imagine all of this happening across different instances across different data center debugging is going to become a nightmare which is one of the reason that a fully reactive development has not picked up well some team some companies are using it and many developer are familiar with that but they are always scared to make changes why it is because of the code complexity and uh, debug issues so if you look at the current architecture these were all the problem we, which you're having you are blocked by number of thread if you want to solve that problem and make it fully reactive uh, you would have to do some complex coding in there and it becomes difficult to debug the issues so because of all of these issues the core issue lied that i cannot increase my capacity in utilization because i am limited by number of threads so java guy said let's solve this problem and they introduce virtual threads it's any request that you want to execute will be executed on a virtual thread and that virtual thread is actually going to make use of platform threads so what this uh, virtual thread does is say you are making a, a call to my web application which is supposed to be making a database call so virtual thread is going to take the request and start it on platform thread and say okay for the request i need to make a db call which is going to say 500 milliseconds so until that 500 millisecond this virtual thread will say hey i am i know i'm blocked for 500 millisecond why don't you go back to the pool and do some other task so my uh, platform thread is returned back and while the database is fetching all the record of this virtual thread will still be blocked but my platform platform thread is free to serve any of these threads over here as soon as the job will be unblocked my virtual thread is going to pick up any other platform thread that is available in the pool to finish the job and it'll end up the virtual thread and as soon as this ends this platform thread is also released so now if i'm going to be looking at my synchronous blocking operation at this point of time right, everything remains exactly the same so you do not have to change your coding drastically you just have to go and introduce your virtual threads it will be a very very small change so as i explained virtual thread will release a platform platform thread anytime it is blocked so when i'm making a call to my website to download the data platform thread will not be blocked if i'm waiting for the data to be fetched virtual thread will continue to be in the block state but it is going to release the platform thread so basically think of this as a pointer to tell that i am waiting on a job as soon as the job is done i would need a platform thread to continue on so it takes a very less mem memory space the same way it will also happen in the asynchronous partial reactive design where you start everything on the virtual thread whenever virtual threads are blocked platform thread will not be blocked it will be immediately released back so, so this improves your performance and uh, you can see one thing which you need to remember over here is that this virtual thread it is not going to decrease your timeline for your database or your io calls if your database call is going to take say, one second to fetch the re record whether you are using a platform thread or using virtual thread architecture that one second is not going to change it will still take one second for the database to get the value back but the difference between the two is on one hand if i'm just using platform threads eventually i will run out of threads and because of that out of memory 
to take any more requests but if i'm using virtual thread i can literally take unlimited requests and wait for the database call to finish before i can make use of platform thread to proceed further now let's take a look at virtual thread how to use virtual thread but disclaimer i'll also show you how i was eventually able to even run out of memory with virtual thread but let's hold on and jump into the demo i'm going to be creating a class called sample1.java and in this class we are first going to create our public static void main and at this point what we want to do is we want to create a platform thread so creating a platform thread is pretty simple now uh, what java has done is they have introduced builder pattern over here so if i have to create a virtual thread or a platform thread it gives me an off platform which is a built on builder pattern and i can just create a platform as off platform and i'm giving name as from thread so i'm going to create a task over here that will just print the name of the thread so i'm going to be creating an empty bracket and i'm providing system out print ln and here i'll simply say in my current thread name so i'm going to write this current platform thread so we're going to just print our current platform thread as constant and we are going to use current dot thread dot simply print out the value now i'll just fix the formatting here so that it's easy to read and now let me fix the window and now what i'm going to do is we're going to copy the same thing and just make a small change to show how a virtual thread is created so let me just copy this whole thing and i'll just paste it the next line and before that i need to start the thread because right now it's in unstarted so i've started that and now i'm going to rename this to virtual thread v thread for virtual thread and i'm going to call this as my virtual thread i'm going to fix this value as well current virtual thread and i'm going to just copy this so we're going to copy this p thread dot start and we are going to join the platform thread and the virtual thread so that the main method actually finishes after these two threads have run you can skip that if you if you want to but of this program it doesn't really matter so i'm just going to do p thread dot join and v thread dot join v thread dot join and let me fix these uh, now so for some reason my id is not allowing me and alt and then enter to automatically fix that and if i run this i should be seeing some print out print statements i think i made a mistake at this point oh i see i have not renamed my on line number 12 i have not fixed the p thread dot start it's not able to restart the thread that's a valid error so let me go ahead and fix this so this will be v thread dot start and there is also a mistake here so i need to make it as thread dot off virtual so when i execute this now you should be able to see thread virtual and a virtual thread is created and platform thread is just named as thread from the thread class so let before i move on to the next class let me show you the builder pattern that i was talking about so java had to support both the existing thread and the virtual threads so as you can see over here if you click on the off platform method it will show you the uh, that this it is built up on a uh, builder pattern now so you have an off platform for creating your regular thread the platform thread which are blocking threads and then you have these virtual threads so if you see here it has builder dot off virtual and all the other method are as is uh, have provided couple of other method to provide some additional constructor parameters which you can look up but this is how the whole is now built up on you can create thread dot off virtual for creating virtual thread and thread dot off platform so let me go ahead and uh, all of these applications all the classes now and before we start working on our next class that is sample number two now in sample number two class what we're going to learn is we will see the concept of how virtual thread releases the platform thread whenever a virtual thread is blocked so i'll just go ahead and add that comment over here so that anybody who is following along will be able to understand what exactly is happening in each classes again some people have complained in the past that you know i am not creating the right classes name and all that the goal here is to just help you understand the concepts and not worry about how the classes should be named you guys are smart enough to figure that out i'm not going to be worrying about that so i've created this sample class i will i'll add the main class and what i'll do is i'll create a list of virtual threads using uh, in stream you can use for loop if you want so at this time i'll just create a thread list and i what i'll do is i'm going to create in stream and i'll say that create up to 10 threads and add them to the list and i'll use a map to object and what 
I'm going to do is I'm simply going to be creating a bunch of methods in there. Uh, so at this point, I want to start virtual threads where I've said that thread dot off virtual and I'll I'll provide as uh, unstarted. So in unstarted, I'll define the task that I want to execute. And now I'll provide the task in there and I'll make sure that it is a collectible list. So now let's go ahead and add uh, a task in there. So at this point, what I'll do is I want to see if the work which was started on virtual thread A is picked up again by virtual thread A when the job is unblocked. And what virtual thread is doing, it, it is going to be releasing the platform thread at some point of time whenever the thread gets blocked. So the pattern that we're going to see is that virtual thread is the same is the same thread where the job started but the platform thread is going to change so wherever i'm going to print the uh, thread name and we're going to see what was the worker thread which was picked up so worker thread that you're going to see is actually the platform thread okay so i'm first going to print that before i put the thread to sleep what is the virtual thread and what is the worker thread that is the platform thread so i'm just going to print this before sleep and now i'm going to put this thread to sleep for a few milliseconds so i've added this and i'm going to copy the same thing and i'm going to print it out right after it has woken up after sleep so when the thread goes to sleep platform thread should be released and when the thread wakes up again, virtual thread is going to make use of another platform thread. Remember the concept that I was talking about, about servers and waiters on how different waiter are going to be serving you at different point of time. So this is the same concept. And now what I need to do is I need to start the threads. So I'm going to just go over the list and do thread start. So thread for each and instead just put in for loop and then catch in case I need to add some more code. So I'm going to go over thread, which will come from my thread list. Let me dump as thread list. And for each of these thread, what I want to do is I want to join. You can skip this whole process if you want. Uh, so basically what will happen is your code will finish immediately but your threads in the background will finish at some later point of time. So I have some example where I need to stop that, okay? I have executed that and now if you see before sleep, the virtual thread was started on thread number virtual thread number 22 and worker number three worker is your platform thread number so it started on three same way uh started five one started on worker five four started on four but what you need to understand here is that it jvm doesn't guarantee you that your threads will start in a sequence so what you'll see is it started on uh virtual thread number 22 started platform thread three before it goes to sleep all right and the fork join pool the my pool group is one so now let's go ahead and see after this thread woke up did it pick up the same platform thread or it, or it picked up a different platform thread if it picked up a different platform thread it means that the thread was platform thread was released and a new platform thread was picked up so you can see that platform virtual thread number 22 after it woke up for task number three it is now running on worker number eight but uh, those number will continue to change on if every machine so you can see the pattern uh, and this concept should be clear now and we can verify that platform thread is being released anywhere where the uh, is blocked so if it was a web call or a db call it would happen the same way let's go ahead and create our next sample class that will be sample three and this is the time where you're going to be seeing how, what is the maximum number of platform thread i can create and what is the max number of virtual thread i can create so this is going to be a little exhaustive code so just follow along if you're watching i've just broken down into smaller method uh, for my uh, sanity and you will be able to understand what exactly is happening so i want to run both the platform and virtual thread from the same code by making minimal changes so i'm just providing some config values over here so this is the number of threads that i want to use for either creating a virtual or the platform thread so i'm going to define the variable over here same way i want to define what type of thread i want to create so that when i when i switch between virtual and platform thread when i execute the code i should be able to just change these two value and uh, make the code run the way i want so i'm going to provide what type of thread i'm going to create so i'll just put in p for platform thread basically in the code i'll just be checking for if the type is equal to p then run the virtual if it is anything else it will just pick up platform as default 
So now I've defined that and in my main class, now I'm going to do the same thing that I, I did earlier, where I'm going to be a list of threads and then executing them. I want to show you in the log, what is the CPU cores that I have on my machine and how many threads are being created. So I'm going to put them in a set so that when I print those values, like you're seeing in the log below, right? so I want to extract those value and print it out that for virtual thread, how many uh, platters are being used or my, and for virtual, how many core threads are being used. So I'll, I'm going to dump them in the, in a set variable and I'm going to just check its size and print it, print those and define a new key set method. I'm going to copy this and I also want to just print the uh, total number of cores also. So I'm going to put them over a thread pool and then I am going to create a list of threads which will actually create a number of thread that is defined in the max in integer on line number eight and that process I'm going to dump it into a method. So I'm going to create a method called create thread list threads and inside this we'll take a couple of parameters. One is the platform thread name set and the pool name then we want to define how many threads we want to create and what type of thread we want. Do we want virtual thread or do we want platform threads? So we have we are going to create that method. Don't worry about that. Uh, before that, we also want to calculate the time that it took for the whole thing to run. So we are going to create a start time and let's call it as start time. So similarly, we, we are all also going to be creating the end time. So at this time, now that my thread list has been created in that method, we are going to again do a simple thread start. And now I want to again define the same thing that for each of them, I want to just go and join them. Now I won't add join, your code will finish immediately and will take much less time. But because I want to show you everything happening while the threads are running, so your main thread is going to end after your platform or virtual thread has finished their task. So right now I'm going to add try and then simply going to define join method. We'll also basically go and comment this section out at some point of time to show you the time differences. So I've added the join method and now I'm going to define the end time. So I'm just going to copy paste this and just rename the variable line number 29. So this will remain the same. I'll just define the end time. And now we are going to print all the values which we want to show when the program finishes. So I'm going to add a couple of sysout statements. So feel free to skip. So the first one I'm going to add is the total time taken in millisecond. So we're simply going to subtract end time minus the start time. So end time. My next thing we want to print is a total number of CPU cores that is being used. So in my case, I'm using eight cores. So it should, it should print, uh, there are eight available cores. And you can get this value from the runtime class. Get next, I want to put in the pool size. And this you can get from the thread pool set name dot size. All of these are going to be, you know, when we add, add our method, which we have not created yet, we're going to add those method. Next, we want to print out how many number of platform or the core thread in case of virtual thread, you'll print out how many number of core threads are being used. So for platform, of course, that, that number is going to be equal to as many threads as you're creating. But for virtual thread, it should always be uh, around eight. So number of core thread used is equal to OS thread. I'm going to print the size for both of these sets. Reason I'm using set so that if it find the same value, meaning that if worker number five is being used four time, it will only make one entry. And uh, simply going to say that the size is equal to one. So that same thread is being used multiple times. You'll only count it as one instance. So let's go ahead and create our thread list now. So what we're going to do is because we want to define a different thread to be created for virtual and for platform, we are using a switch statement. So if the type is equal to V for virtual, we want to create the virtual thread, right? So I'm simply going to copy paste this whole from my sample two class and I'm going to dump it over here. And I'm simply going to change this value from zero all the way to the maximum int, the value which is which is coming in. So, so this thread dot of virtual looks good and rest of the value I'm going to remove for now and we're going to add our own code. 
So you define the task. So in the task, the first define the field called pool name, and this pool name again we are going to extract from a friend method where it will get the pool name by type, and then we are going to set it into the thread pool name set. So we are going to be adding a sleep task. So what we are going to do is after it has calculated all of those values, we are going to let it sleep for 500 millisecond and we are just going to fix some of these values and we need to create this method get pool name so let's go ahead and add that we are going to add the default method for platform later so in the pool name what takes a string type that is the what is the type of string uh, creating based on that it needs to pull the pool name so mm -hmm. i'm going to be removing this return statement and we are going to create a string for pool name so let's go ahead and define that we're going to extract this value from the current thread we are going to use switch again over here v for virtual thread and default for the platform thread so what will happen is if it is a virtual thread this is how your thread dot current thread dot two string will look like so, so sample virtual thread output will look something like that i have highlighted over there virtual thread 23 so now what we need to do is we are going to return pool name and we are going to substring from the uh, uh, pool name dot index of now we are going to extract the value of the from the fork join pool right so from add up to fork join because we're getting the pool name so that is right after add fork join pool hyphen one one is the pool name so we're going to start from add fork join pool and then we need to it all the way we're again going to get the pool dot index of and this time we're going to get it from the worker so what your code will actually look, look like is hyphen one it will be setting up in the keys okay so we have added that and this value will be returned and if it is of type thread i've already seen a sample before from this code so we are going to simply copy pasting how it looks for thread and just going to extract the value so for thread we don't have to use uh, much in there anyway because i'm just going to be dumping the value of worker because thread we all already know that it's going to use uh, one pool anyway I'm, I'm not using thread pool so this number is not going to change either for virtual or for from thread if you if you see i've already pasted how the sample will look like and i'm going to again get the value of pool name dot index of i'll just dump what uh, as is next method is the one which is uh, important for us that is for getting the total number of workers created okay then create our worker worker method now so we have defined that this again takes type equal to string for virtual thread or the platform thread we are again going to create a worker name as a string so we're going to provide string worker name and thread dot current thread so virtu uh, virtual thread number 26 runnable at fork gen pool pool number and followed by the platform thread number so if i'm uh, to get that value this is the value which which i want to extract worker number seven worker number eight these are worker numbers so i'm going to start index of worker and i want to ex extract all the way all the values after that worker so i'll get the values hyphen seven hyphen eight hyphen five so this will count how many from thread or the core threads have, are being used at any given point of time and again, i'm just going to create a sleep task uh, where all i'm going to do is do uh, thread dot sleep so i'm passing in the value if if you want to modify the code and you want to you know add the how how long the thread should sleep you want to pass it as a as a value defined in the configuration you can do that because what will happen is when you're trying to run multiple threads say 10000 15000 or a million thread that sleep task matters because if you're going to put as 1500 millisecond you're, and because i'm using thread join it'll take a long time for the program to get finished so if you want to extract this value and change it to something else you can extract this as a con configuration or you can just leave it as a slider number so right now i'm extracting this value because i'll be playing around with that as i increase the number of threads to run it multiple time i'm going to change the values so now this value is now provided as a configuration and now what i need to do is uh, i need to remove this return from here and uh, before that i need to first also add the default for platform thread so if i if i pass anything other than v for virtual thread it is going to execute as 
platform thread so i'm going to add copy this whole thing over here and just dump it copy and paste and all i need to change over here is thread uh, method name call off virtual i'm going to change it to off platform so it's going to sleep for the same amount of time and i'm also missing this platform thread name set so i need to go and add this value where i'm going to be putting this in the uh, set so i'm going to add a return statement in both the places so i'm going to add that i'm going to add return online number 42 as well so this has executed and because i'm running the platform thread it took 507 millisecond pool size one and number of platform thread is equal to number of thread that i have requested now if i increase this number first if i add 100 let me see if 100 will be created so i should see that there are 100 threads platform threads created and used and the number increased to 511 same way if i continue to increase now the platform thread will, will be created without any issues it, it's not going to take uh, long eventually we'll see that at some point of time it's going to error out so if i provide 10,000 over here uh, error out at some point of time so i already mentioned right the maximum number thread that is available is 4096 but when i'm going to run it will be close to 4096 it is able to create 4068 threads and it error out other threads as i was talking earlier that other threads are being you being used by my other process or application that are running in the background but the maximum number of thread that i am able to create for this one is 4068 if you want to verify that how many maximum number of thread that your operating system can handle for that you can uh, run a command in the macbook so for macbook there's a, a different command and for linux there's a different command i'm printing the linux one on the screen but a linux book, you have a specific command that you can execute what is the maximum number of thread we can create so i'm going to go ahead and uh, my terminal here I'm going to copy this command called system kernel dot number of task set. So if you see over here, that is equal to 4096. So if you go back to the formula that I had, I was talking about earlier. If you divide this 4096 by 16 GB, it is going to give you 4 MB per thread that is being created. So that is how I, I was able to figure out that what is the uh, amount of uh, the thread is taking so now let's run with the virtual thread and uh, this time we stopped at 10,000 for platform I am going to start with 100 and of course virtual thread will run as is and what you'll see here is that the number of platform thread used is 8 only so as you can see no matter whatever number I'm going to increase that platform thread is not going to uh, beyond 8 so if I run with the 10,000 threads over here, I change the value to 10,000. If I execute this, you would see that the time difference is not much. It's only 621 millisecond. And the number of core is still is equal to eight. Now, if I run the same virtual thread, with maximum thread created is equal to 4,000 and I'll prove this that the time difference between the virtual thread and platform thread is different so if you see here i ran with 4000 the time taken is 532 if i change this to platform thread this number is going to be slightly higher and what it tells is that platform thread takes a while to get created and which is why this number is will be slightly higher and i'm keeping the sleep time same over here so if you see no matter how many time i'm going to run that number will still be around is still around 800 but that's not the case for the virtual thread. Virtual thread gets created somewhere around 530-ish uh, time frame. And 500 is uh, from the sleep time that has been added because I'm using the join over there. And so 500 is constant and plus 34 millisecond was extra was taken for creating the threads. Now, if I'm going to change this number to say 10,000 and uh, 100,000, and if I run this again, you would see that the time is still pretty low actually 897 millisecond right what happens if i delete this or comment out this join method now it's going to be much much faster for both virtual and the platform thread because at this point of time my main method is not waiting for my program to finish meaning all the thread it has started it's not waiting for them to finish so my main has already ended and the threads are still working in the background the sleep is still blocking it and waking up and continue it so 
same way if i am going to change it to platform thread by reducing the number of threads so i'm creating 4000 even over here you will see that the code has finished pretty quickly 217 millisecond earlier it was around 800 is something right so as you can see there is a time difference and with the virtual thread if i create 100000 and i run that number is around 119 millisecond what happened if i add another zero and now i'll be running 1 million virtual threads let's see what is the time it will take and whether it can run 1 million threads i think that's why many of you have clicked on this video to see how it performs so here's the truth it has taken 853 millisecond and it executed perfectly without any issues even if i would have uh, added on join right all it will do is it will continue to finish this my program has ended this does not mean the threads have completed the threads might still be running in the background and if i increase add another zero i add another uh, now it becomes 10 million if i execute this it'll still finish and i'll show you that at some point of time if i continue to increase i will be able to exhaust my memory and that's not because of virtual thread limitation because java says that you can create unlimited virtual thread so even with the with this big number it has completed but if i add one more zero so if you see the number of uh, threads created still eight time taken is 13.256 so my threads in the background might might still be running and i may still have to you know possibly at some point of time if my uh, thing gets blocked i'll have to go back and kill the program so i'm going to add one more zero all i'm trying to show here is that i how you can you know miss code or code improperly to break your break your main application so at this point of time you will see that i will be running out of memory and the hint is it's because of the way i'm creating the threads i'm creating a list of threads so at this point i think the number is 100 million uh, correct me if, if i'm wrong but i think that's 100 million so at this point of time at some point this code is going to error out and i will see there is a java heap space error where the threads were not created so what is happening is i am first creating a list of thread unstarted thread okay and they all take some memory in the heap space so that heap space is running out of space and that's why it's going to complain that i don't have any memory to hold the unstarted thread it is not erroring out because the system was not able to provide us the core thread core threads are available but before they can be started i am making a list of all the unstarted thread in the memory so i'm still waiting for it to error out all right so it has error out and let me go to the main error where i can show you the actual error message thrown by the program so this is the uh, not this one i need to go and check over it so over here you will see that it has error out because of java heap space my heap space ran out of holding all the 100 million threads in there right so to fix that particular thing i would have to go and kill the program because threads are still running and i will not be able to continue so i've killed the program and restarted it and now i'm using another simpler program where i'm not creating the thread as a list i'm creating the threads and then putting them to sleep so threads are being uh, started as soon as they are created so over here if i uh, just go and execute this program so if you see i have the same number of thread that i want to create which were which ran out of me memory in the last place so at this point this this is 10 million and if i see right now i am somewhere around 1.2 and the number will increase of course it's going to take time because here i'm not using any sleep so the whole program is going to wait until all of the threads are created so i'm just putting them to sleep for 10 millisecond if i would have used the same 500 millisecond it would take a very long time so i just reduce the number from 510 so it's not because i've reduced the sleep time uh, it's because i have got rid of the list how, how i was creating the thread so here i'm creating the thread as it comes and this is this can be a real scenario as well where you are having customer who are like quickly uh making a call to your application and the threads are being blocked so it, even if, if it was one second it would have finished 
So I'm still at 8.5 and at some point of time I will reach the magic number here and if you see here this worked fine. Now if I increase this num number with another zero this will this will work again but it's going to take a very very long time. I was running it with a profile right so if, if you see here the CPU never went beyond 50% and uh, even the heap memory also didn't reach its maximum it was somewhere around 3890 or 2890 and it will quickly go down so I have to go back to my terminal and go ahead and kill all of the all of the thread that may be sleeping and waking up and ending so I have to go back and do that otherwise my id is going to get blocked so if i if i now run with the 100 million uh so it is still running so now this this will take a very very long time okay and if it's going to take long of course i'm going to stop the code but at some point of time these 100 million threads will complete and i think it'll take somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes i'm not going to waste your time so if it if i'm able to cross beyond 10 million i am assuming that will also finish uh, the 100 million processing as well so i'm going to fast forward the code and if i stop at some time i'll i'll start the video again so let's wait and see how long it finishes so as you can see that i was telling about i was creating the list here right this is why my code was erroring out uh, because of memory space and for each of them then i was starting so this this was the line where the where the code was erasing out in line number 21 the line prior to the one which i have highlighted and let's go back and see at what number we are so we are still at 5.5 and as you can see i'm already one minute one minute and 31 second you can see on the left side i may have to just go and you know uh, kill the kill the code at some point of time uh, but let's now look at the top so as you can see the numbers are numbers will be between varying between 78 to 85 percent and my only place where i'll see spikes is in the uh, memory but even that won't be much because i'm starting the thread one at a time and not as a list so uh, let's see how far it goes so it is it went up to 80 plus and it again fell down and that's because um it's uh it's taking only 10 millisecond of sleep time so I'm still at eight and it's still at 8.8 .8 million and some and I'm at two minute and 33 second and it is still running. Let me go back and see where we are. So I think if if I if I check the number if on an average it is going to take three minute to create 10. Uh, then I'm guessing it'll rough rough calculation it'll be three into ten that'll be thirty minutes to run all of these hundred million right. So I'm not going to wait that long. I want to see if as soon as I'm crossing um, ten million, I should be able to kill the program. And I just want to go back to top. And numbers have not moved. It is still running smoothly. So. I don't want to waste anyone's time but the whole point is that at some point of time this will finish so i'm just going to pause now and then see yep i have crossed the 10 million number now and i'm in 11.11 .11 million and some extra some change threads running so let me go ahead and uh, kill that i'm not sure how long my machine is going to continue to run because those whatever 11 million threads are there they're still waking up so they will be running in the background so if you are if you want to run this thing make sure that after your code finishes and you're if you're using any number beyond 10 millisecond you actually go and uh, look for ps minus ef grab java command to find out what java process are still running so that you can go and kill that particular code otherwise uh, your machine for some period of time it will it'll stop working or will not be at its peak performance and i'm just checking my top command one more time and in the meanwhile let me see and go and kill my uh, java program so let me go and check on the process over here and i'll go and kill this making sure that i've 
killed all the Java processes. So the final score where I stopped is uh, somewhere around 11.6, maybe around 11.7. I can scroll this house and check. Yeah, the final number is 11.7. There you go. So now we have seen how virtual thread works, how to make use of that. Uh, so summarizing everything, uh, if you see, virtual thread severs the one-on-one -on -one relation between its threads and OS threads. So as soon as your block platform is released, you have your platform threads available to do any of the tasks. So that if platform thread is released, of course my core, core thread will be released to do, do the job. You can create practically unlimited number of threads. So in my case, as you saw, 10 million was a very small number. Yes, it takes time to create those many threads. And I was trying to uh, span up to 100, 100 million, but it was taking uh, minutes to do that. I didn't have time to do it. I eventually stopped 11.7 million, but I knew I would not have, uh, you know, blocked my application or saturated my memory and my threads. It would have continued after a long time. It would eventually completed my code out there. So you, you can try it out. The best part what I liked was that developer can keep using the imperative design. You don't have to jump into functional coding and try all mono flux and do all sort of complex uh, design around your code. You can continue to use the old way of designing and just make use of a uh, virtual thread and you can literally make your application non-killable because of number of people which are coming in, okay? And you also don't have to worry about NIO and IO libraries. So when you're using fully reactive code, you have, you have to make sure that using the NIO version of say MongoDB. So it, if, you, if you're using a core concept, I explained, uh, there's a panache version of Mo MongoDB and there's a NIO version. I, I'm mixing up the names here so you can go and check, but there are two version of the uh, MongoDB library, one with the blocking IO, one with the non-blocking IO. So when you're using reactive, you have to make sure you're using that. And the challenge is not all libraries will have a non-blocking version of the IO. So because of all of these, with the use of virtual thread, your design will stay very simple and your error handling and debugging of the code is going to piece of cake. So with that, I'll end the lecture, but uh, I would request you to please subscribe and uh, do comment. If I have, you know, misquoted something, do do correct me. I'm happy to do the feedback and also let me know if you want to see any more threading in detail. I'm planning another video on just pair threads in future, which is going to walk through the internals, how thread actually works, what is the cleanup process, what exactly happens uh, in, in, in the whole whole uh, threading world of Java. So if you're interested, do stay, stay tuned. I usually re, uh, release my video to every three weeks, actually it's a long time for me to do that. I strive hard to make sure that I provide as much detail as possible, which is my video gets longer. So if you if you want to skip a section, do skip or do comment. If you want me to summarize and make shorter videos, I would be happy to do that. Or I can just make a playlist and add details in there. Thank you.